Wednesday, April 10th here on the Just Baseball Show. That's Arm Layton and I am Peter Apple. And this is part two of Buy or Sell. Yesterday, we did it for the American League. Today, Arm and I tackle the National League. But before that, we have a couple of just terrible news. Again, yeah. it's yeah. just more injuries. It's more shit that we got to talk about. And I don't want to spend too much time on it no. because, frankly, I'm sick of spending so much time on it. And I actually gave on yesterday's show you and Jack some flowers for the incredible oh, segment that you guys did on Tommy John surgery and really the epidemic here, you know, in Major League Baseball. So make sure to go check out that Monday episode. And all of this is brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sports books. I know you probably heard the ad read at the beginning, but remember code just baseball when you download you do not want to leave that first bet offer of fifteen hundred dollars just laying on the table arm you do not want to just leave it when they're giving it out how often are books given out for first bet offers up to fifteen hundred make sure to gamble responsibly must be 21 or older terms and conditions apply and if you have a gambling problem call or text 1-800 gambler code just baseball the link is in the episode description how are you in Florida? Feeling good, yeah. sort of. I mean, everyone we love is hurt. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just like just keep checking my elbow, making sure I'm good. Uh, <laughs> like it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I you know. Imagine if I we wanted, got put I'm on the IL. Could, Imagine if we got yeah. put on the IL for a podcast injury. Yeah, I like I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it to start. You know, getting to us. You know, to get to the podcasters who sit <laughs> on their ass. Like their their elbows start going. Like it's it's just depressing um and and that's why i love doing the episodes like this where we're going to talk about so many different things that are fun and and just try to highlight the the positives in the game uh because at the end of the day like there's still so many positives all the time but on the red sox side you know i I do really feel for them because you know on one side you have a fluky injury with trevor story just trying to make a play in the hole and now he's pretty much you know done for the entire season and then the pavetta thing seems like at least a positive prognosis uh, relatively speaking they said flexor strain but a very mild one so you know sometimes you can get just catch it early enough to where usually flexor strain can be that like precursor to something you know usually really bad but if they if it's a very mild one as i think the red sox said that's encouraging i'm just you know i'm gutted for trevor story who it was starting to look pretty pretty good this year looking healthy and you know this red sox team all of a sudden was looking fun he was a big part of of that middle infield that we were kind of worried about uh and now i'm even more worried about it uh it's it's just really unfortunate for a team that looks pretty good out of the gate that we were talking about as like hey you know they're they're not bad uh they've got some good pitching they've they can swing it uh it's a tough blow for them especially cuz i think those are the two spots that probably hurt the most a pitcher and their shortstop position it's such a kick to the groin. I was just, we were just doing buy and sell yesterday, and I came to Jack with the take. Now it's kind of outlandish, but I said, buy or sell, the Red Sox rotation finishes top 10 in ERA. At the time of recording, they were second or first or yeah. third or within the top three, and all of them looked great. And it was really headlined by Nick Pavetta. Now, Crawford, yeah. Bayo, Hauk, um, Whitlock, they've all been great, but it just feels like Pavetta was making that leap to the ace of the staff with this electric strikeout stuff. And as soon as we start seeing the electric stuff, we get hit with an elbow injury. Now, we don't know if it's Tommy John. We don't know if he needs surgery. He hit the 15-day IL with elbow or flexor strain. Well, they so say it was a mild flexor, so I don't think he'll need TJ I, for now. For now. Well, like, right, we have no idea. And then Trevor Story, it's that same shoulder. It's the ligament. He's going to need surgery, and he's going to be out six months. So... Basically, he's done for the entire season. And just to add on top of it, Josiah Gray was scratched today with elbow soreness for the Washington Nationals, and he was off to a really rough start. Could it have been because his elbow isn't feeling 100%? We have no idea. Will it result in Tommy John surgery? We have no idea. We'll continue to update you all on the Just Baseball show. But as of right now, we're just sitting here with a bunch of guys who we love to watch baseball and we can't watch them anymore. It just stinks. And I don't know yeah. how to break it down anymore other than this sucks and it's going to keep sucking forever until they do a massive change starting when you're 11 years old and they say, <laughs> hey, you don't need to throw 95 as a 12-year-old. Yeah, we should just start throwing underhand. But, you know, I think it's just one of those things that I think we just got to kind of get a little bit more callous to like in terms of just 
getting used to it, which is unfortunate. I, I, I mean, I'm talking about on our end because like we got to just talk about baseball and make it fun and uh, and and highlight everything that's going on in the game. But on the Major League Baseball side, I thought Jeff Passan did a fantastic job talking about how disappointing it was between you know, the PA and, and MLB just kind of like sparring each other right now about the issue instead of just saying like, hey, let's come together and figure out what the hell is going on? You know, the, the PA only citing pitch clock, uh, MLB bragging about all the initiatives that they've done to, you know, do research into what's going on with elbows. Yeah, a lot of help that's done. Yeah, uh, so, like, I, I think both sides, as Pass and said, need to come together and figure something out because this is a, an issue that is beyond all everybody involved. So, um, hopefully, they do that, and we will do our job of just continuing to, you know, highlight the positives in this game and and you know just bring you some some fun things to talk about. Something a little lighter that is also Major League Baseball's fault, but has nothing to do with injuries. You see Riley Green in the game on Tuesday facing the Pittsburgh Pirates in the early game. He slid and his pants just completely broke. Like down the seam. It wasn't even just like a little rip. His whole pants fell apart. He had to go into the locker room and get new pants. What an embarrassment for Major League Baseball, these uniforms. I mean, are you kidding me, dude? It's like the the tearaways from uh, like in basketball, like those the like globe trotters. Yeah, like you just rip those. Like, dude, I that's a whole other thing. That I, it's just it's it's just baseball. Like major league baseball just literally can't get out of its own way sometimes. And the jersey thing is like a hilarious, just classic, classic example. Time to get into buy or sell. This is fun. This is I, fun. I'm, I'm interested. So again, just a reminder, I have 15 takes. One I have no idea what they are, too, by the way. One for each team in the National League, and I've not showed Aram what they are. So you're getting his instant reaction, buy or sell. Now, there's some context to it. You could buy it a little bit or you could sell it a little bit, but you have to answer buy or sell for these takes. All right, we're going to go team by team in order of standings. Okay. Before we start, I'll yeah, be honest, ahead. I promise to, I won't like skew it. How many do you think I buy and how many do you think I sell? It's a great question. I think you buy 10 of them and sell five of them. Wow. Jack was around that part. Okay. These aren't like, they are they sound crazy, but then when you think about it, it's not actually that crazy. Basically, my takeaways from the first 10 or 11 games of this season, latching onto some guys that I think will continue great starts or watching some horrible baseball and saying, is it going to be this horrible for this long? All right, I'm in. All right, I I was I was like preparing for some like crazy Peter vision. Like I'm gonna say I'm gonna buy like four of them. But no, now I'm excited though. It's well, I was excited either way because I was like, <laughs> what's my reaction gonna be? But this is good. I'm I have no idea where you're going with this either. There's a little Peter vision sprinkled in here, just so you know. <laughs> just so you know, it's the greatest stat we have. So why would I not? Use I mean, it? I agree. I I don't have access to it yet. <laughs> okay. Atlanta Braves. Chris Sale ends the season as the Braves leader in F war among their starting pitching staff. Mm -hmm. Spencer Strider, we hope he comes back healthy. Let's assume that he does. We can assume that he does, or at least maybe it's going to take a little while. You do whatever you want. The question is yeah. for you. You have Max Fried off to a terrible start. You have Charlie Morton off to a pretty damn good start, sort of relative to expectations. And then you also have Reynaldo Lopez at the back end. But Chris Sale has looked disgusting so far. He looks like vintage Chris Sale. Now, will he stay healthy? We hope. We have to assume right now. So assuming health, assuming he gives you a classic Chris Sale or whatever you've seen from Chris Sale so far, yeah. are you buying or selling Chris Sale leads the Braves pitching staff in F4? I'm going to buy that. Mm. Um, I'm going to buy that. I think he finds, and then that might be the optimist, uh, the optimist in me, but you know, I, I think the way he's looked this year too, is averaging 95 on the heater. Um, just looks like he's moving better than I've seen him move in a while. Uh, you can tell he kind of feels like reinvigorated. I, I think a change of scenery, like the mental side of it's big too. And I, I think just seems like he's feeling good yeah. from a mental and physical perspective. And those sometimes, you know, those always go together, to be honest. I think people really, you know, we, we all underestimate how much that happens. And with Strider going down, like even in the most optimistic scenarios, he's going to be out for a while. Sales going to get a lot of starts to pile up here. And, you know, 
I, I just think he looks like you said a lot like old sale. Uh, even if he's not, if he's seventy percent of that, if he's sixty percent of old sale, I still think he leads the staff in in, in F four. Um, yeah, I, I think he looks awesome, and that slider has been disgusting. And now it would be really fun for baseball, and they need him to step up now. So I love that question, but honestly, I think that was a, more of a softer like ball pitch so far because. I, I think that would be my favorite pick to to see who could lead. I mean, I know it's a little bit overreactive maybe to Freed because we've seen Freed just be dominant and the underlying numbers have liked him a lot in the past too. Uh, but I think with the way Freed has looked, not only, yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? I think that's still a relatively hot take because yeah. Freed has put together some crazy seasons. Um, and even when he was healthy last year, was dominant. Um, but yeah, no, I'm buying it. I, I'm pretty worried about Freed at this point. I am, I am a little concerned. Yeah, what have you seen from Freed? Because when, I, when I've when i been watching him his first couple of starts, because I faded him against the Arizona Diamondbacks, and I took Diamondbacks money line, and the Diamondbacks scored six runs in the first inning. They did not win the game, thankfully. Diamondbacks just taking my money. Thanks a lot, Bet MGM taking my money. But more of the conversation surrounds Max Freed because he's off to two terrible starts. Now, he has a history of starting off a little slow. Not this slow. And not off a season where he was dealing with injuries himself. When you watch Max Freed, it doesn't look like the same cat right now. No, I mean, he, he doesn't look like he trusts the fastball at all. Yes, and, exactly. And it seems like he's missing up with the curve. Like, it just seems like he's out of sync. And yep. I'm sure he'll settle in and be better. But how long does that take? Because if he gets blown up a few more starts, you're working from behind in the, in, in the F4 uh, race here. I, I think Freed's going to ultimately be all right. And I think he'll get things going by the end of the season when they need him to. Uh, but you're definitely seeing some rust. And and I, I think for the first time, you know, Freed's always been one of those guys where you look at him and he's like, how does he get as many swings and misses as he gets? Right. You know, how does he shut lineups down? Like he always seems to out pitch the stuff and have so much confidence in doing so. He doesn't seem like he has that same level of confidence right now. And, and that's kind of what stood out to me. But it's more of a support of Chris Sale than an indictment on Freed uh, in terms of I think Sale paces the team in F4 on the pitching side. It's so exciting when Chris Sale is good, right? When Byron Buxton made that diving Superman oh play in that Twins Dodgers game, that just fired me up. Like with all these injuries, but we get healthy Buxton. We're getting. I was gonna say maybe, Sale. maybe that, maybe that's where we'll even out a little bit. Like the unfortunately, baseball is getting ravaged on the pitching side, but like the baseball gods give us Byron Buxton healthy for like 130 games. How about Mike Trout? Incredible. Mike Trout has five home runs. Like Mike that's Trout's awesome. been great. Okay. Yeah, that's also true. Mike Trout uh, looks like you know prime Trout. If we get, it's not a good you know trade. I don't want to trade that, but at least that would be a nice silver lining of um, two of the guys that we've just been so desperate to see healthy. At the very least, can can be healthy. That would be a nice consolation prize for what's been just brutal uh, for the game. Let's move on to the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, this one's going to make you think. Oh, I think you're going to end up buying this one. Oh, okay. Spencer Turnbull. Finishes as the third most valuable Phillies pitcher by F4 at the end of the season. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, Ranger Suarez is in this rotation. Christopher Sanchez is in this rotation. Of course, Nola and Wheeler, though it was, would be the first two. But Spencer Turnbull has been wildly impressive to me. Among all qualified starters, he's currently 18th in Stuff Plus which is a pitch modeling statistic on fan graphs that grades physical characteristics of each pitch. We've talked about it before. He's throwing a lot more breaking balls because his fastball was always destroyed. But he's got a sweeper, and he's got a bunch of them, and they're working. And among Stuff Plus, he's surrounded by guys like Ryan Pepio, Cole Reagans, Tyler Glass now, Chris Sale. He's in that range right now. 0, zero, zero ERA. 226 expected, 31.7% strikeout rate. <laughs> and so far, Christopher Sanchez and Ranger Suarez both have ERAs over four. Are you buying that Spencer Turnbull is a great <laughs> find for the Phillies and ends up being their third most valuable pitcher? Or am I smoking too much and Peter Vision needs to chill a little bit? I've been impressed. Uh, so here, this is a good one. <laughs> this is a tough one. This is a good one. I love Ranger. And, but also like we've seen Spencer Turnbull be good through stretches emphasis on stretches, but 
you know, not this there was good. 50 innings. Not this 50 good. innings? No, no, not this good. But I'm yeah. saying like there's there's it's not like he's come out of totally nowhere. Like he, he's been pretty good in stretches. So like maybe a guy like that can find something a, a, a bit. Uh, but we've never seen him miss bats like this. You know, I look at the, you know, he, he had a 4-6 ERA in 148 innings in 2019. And then uh, I think 2021, before I think he got hurt, 50 innings, he had a 288, and And the underlying numbers were great there. And then just, he's been banged up over the last year and a half, two years. But there was some points where he was throwing really well for, for the Tigers. I, it's just hard for me because I like Ranger so much. And I think Ranger is is so good. I don't think it's crazy. I told but I you it'd be a tough one. This is I a good think one. I'm going to sell it because okay. I like Ranger, but I am going to buy that Turnbull was a good find and is a good four or five for them. And I am going to buy that he has made some legitimate adjustments to his arsenal that have him looking. Right. I mean, his fastball got pillaged this last short. year. Pill, both of them, the four seamer, the two seamer, both yeah. just got absolutely dismantled. That's why, and then, that's why I mentioned the breaking balls. He's throwing like three different ones, and he's lowered the fastball usage a ton. It makes sense, right? If your fastball is getting killed, stop throwing your damn fastball, Turnbull. Well, and the guys that have bad fastballs, I you know you want. I think the best way to to overcome that is exactly what you said: the kitchen sink approach. Like Aaron Savali is a kitchen sink guy, and it works. Uh, there's there's several other guys that do it really well. Um, that having that sweeper really helps him against righties. I, I think he's going to be good. I don't think it's crazy at all. I'm just going to go with Ranger because I think Ranger is really good and he's going to have a nice, you know, and a really nice season overall if he can stay healthy. But I, I don't think that's crazy at all. I think Turnbull's a great find for them and it's, it's going to be a difference maker, I think, over 162 then, now that they don't have kind of that gaping hole in the five spot right now. That's probably the answer because you're also kind of taking the field because you would put Christopher Sanchez in, who does yeah, look like a great pitcher Yeah, if he stands on himself. his head again, if, too. Yeah, exactly. He could, and then maybe he looks better than Ranger, and then Turnbull's at four, even if he does beat Ranger. You know, it's. I just I wanted to highlight Spencer Turnbull no, because I I've been, it. yeah, I think he's been great. All right, and you have move. a tangible... You have a tangible adjustment too. Like the arsenal is different. He added a sweeper. Uh, he's masking the fastball more. Like if he was just doing the same thing that he was doing last year and had a 70 RA and, you know, just is off to a weirdly good start this year, like, yeah, maybe something's there, but I'd be even more skeptical. There's a tangible arsenal change, pitch usage change, and there's results. Couldn't agree with you more. All right, let's move on to the New York Mets. Now, this one. You're probably going to buy it because it seems easy, but I want to remind everyone what the expectations were for this rotation going into the year without Kodai Senga. The New York Mets rotation finishes top 15 in ERA as a staff. They are currently fourth in Major League Baseball. How about Jose Quintana just continues to do Jose Quintana things? He's one of those guys like Tyler Wells or Martin Perez, you just kind of wake up and he's only given up one run in five innings. And you're like, oh, did he pitch yeah, well? They're the like, like I don't remember. Plus guy. Yeah. Yeah. But he keeps on doing it. Luis Severino did look pretty damn good in his last start. Velo's <laughs> been there. How about Sean Manaya? How about Adrian Hauser? And they're going to get back Kodai Senga. Not a lot of great names, but it's not like the competition has been that bad. And they're fourth in ERA as a staff. Are you buying they finish in the top half of Major League Baseball this year? Mm. So I love Christian Scott, too, and I think he's going to get up there at some point soon. I knew you'd mention and, him. And help. He punched out nine, uh, walked zero in his, uh, in his first outing in AAA this year. I, tough. This is a tough one because... Part of me is like, well, there's so many rotations I like better. But then the other part of me is like, there's rotations ahead of them right now that I don't like better than them. Like, there, there's some that definitely aren't great. And when Kodai's on the mound, I mean, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball in the second half, assuming he's healthy and is able to throw the same way or anywhere near it. Like, that's a huge boost for them. I'm worried that Manaya doesn't maintain it. I'm worried Severino doesn't maintain it. I'm more worried about Severino and, than Manaya, honestly. Oh, for sure. I'm more worried about Severino. Yeah, but if those guys don't maintain, you're bringing up a Christian Scott, and then maybe another prospect. I think his Budo's like been fine. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, like kind of good. <laughs> he's been fine. Like, 
uh, I, I guess like the, the way to go about it would be like, which rotations are you taking over them? And, you know, I don't want to sit here and list 14 of them. But man, I mean, these guys are dropping like flies and the Mets have a great thing going for them. Most of their guys throw 90. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. <laughs> They have a bunch of guys that are going to be fucked up. Safe. It's so fucked up. Ah, uh, I mean, this one could look so bad at the end of the so year. Bad. They're twenty eighth in ERA, and we're just like, <laughs> yeah. dude, we we said they'd be top fifteen on April tenth. <laughs> um, Classic like overreaction theater. But I have been impressed with them. What am I supposed to say? I'm seeing a lot of fractured rotations. Like buyer se- buyer sell. Francisco Lindor hits a hundred. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, it's like yeah. I think he's below that right now, actually. He might be. He might um, be. I'm going to mm, – this might be the hardest one, I swear. Uh, I will – I'll buy it. They just have too many options. Yes. Um, that was my But point. I think they legitimately finished 14th. 14th. I agree. I said the same thing about the Red Sox before, obviously, Dick Pavetta goes down the next day, <laughs> where I was like, top 10, I was like, I think they finished 10th. Because I can give you a bunch right now that definitely are worse. Any RA like I like the Rockies. I, I even the Marlins are a slam dunk going to be worse now with, with everything they have going on. Um, you the know, like the Angels, the Nationals, the A's. Like we can get go real quick here, and all of a sudden you, you're pretty close. The White Sox, like some of the White Sox are actually in the 15 spot right now. Um, but then it gets close. I think the thing is, like you got the Detroits to the world that are solid. Like I got you cooking. I got you cooking right now. I love these exercises. Fuck, this one hurts. This one's this one's breaking my brain. I now now I'm looking at like Chicago. I still would probably take them. Would Baltimore, you take would I'd you take, take the them. Cubs? Would you take the Cubs? Probably. Managa. Well, Steel's out. Cubs fans probably just threw up in their lap listening to that. They're but like, with, what with do you Hendrix, mean we have Steel and Imanaga? I was like, yeah, well, what about yeah, the actually Hendrix's Assad's been, right. been good? Yeah, I'd take Assad the is the Assad does a sub two. Yeah, he's um, dominated I, every single guy, time. Breaks my brain. Uh the <clears throat> I'm, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm selling that shit. Right. I'm selling that. I'm sorry. That was a good one, though. That was a good one. I'm selling it. I, I just, there's too many rotations that I think are going to get better. Like, I still, even Toronto, not like Toronto as a sports of 5 1 3 the whole year. Um, I think Severino is going to flounder. I think Manaya is just too volatile and they're going to probably rely on rookies in the back half of the season. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to sell it, but I almost bought it. I almost bought it. Let's I move on. Let's move on to the Washington Nationals, fourth place Washington Nationals. So, Nationals fans, I wrote down something about Josiah Gray, and then he got scratched from the start. So, I just decided to shelve that one. It was going to be buy or sell. Josiah Gray finishes as the least valuable pitcher in the Nationals rotation after putting up a 14 ERA. And Patrick Corbin hasn't looked great, but he's looked better than Josiah Gray has. And you have Jake Irvin, you have... Trevor Williams, you have some other guys. And I was like, well, if he goes up every day and gives up nine runs, it's it's going to be over. But I'm not going to do that. And then I also thought, buy or sell the Nationals having the worst record in the National League. And then I thought, well, I'd sell that because the Rockies are worse. Yeah. So I, I came to you with a positive one. And it's very, eh, it's easy-ish. 25-50 season for C.J. Abrams, buy or sell. 25 home runs. Last year, he had 18 home runs, 47 stolen bases. Already has two home runs and three steals, but he has been banged up in the last couple of days. I don't think he's going to hit the IL, but he has been, I think he jammed his thumb, so he should be back soon. But you're the C.J. Abrams guy. I mean, this is one of the first takes that we ever said on a mic was Arm <laughs> Layton hyping up C.J. Abrams as one of the next great shortstops in Major League Baseball. So as we sit well, here on Tuesday, April 9th, C.J. Abrams, 25.50, buy or sell. So we'll background even further. Uh, I don't drunk tweet, folks, by the way. Just, just <laughs> don't tweet when you're drunk. Um, I was, I, which is also just shows like how, how insane this is. It's not like I'm going out every day, but when I, I don't know where I went out in the city, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was at a friend's birthday party, whatever it was. 
for whatever reason at like 11 30 p.m i'm tweeting about cj abrams and like i was you know i was i was feeling it i was definitely you know i had a few you just and bought a card I, before that and you're like yeah i was like out. wouldn't be surprised if he gets to three thousand hits <laughs> just like, i woke up the next morning and i was like what the fuck did i just tweet three no, thousand i'm saying wouldn't be surprised if he's a hall of famer like what the, who says that no you know why i love it because drunk thoughts are what you feel deep down inside. I want you to stand by that one because that's yeah. a take that you feel deep in your loins. And I'm always <laughs> spewing takes that I feel in my loins all the time. And some of them are right. Some of them are wrong. But, hey, stand by it. And I respect the damn take. He's a hitting machine. So you're you're saying you podcast like you're drunk, basically. A hundred percent. Has anyone ever <laughs> listened to this podcast? <laughs> um, no, but I'm buying it. I, I really am because, and, and it's beyond like trying to validate drunk me uh, or validate prospect head me. Um, <laughs> you know, I put out a piece at the end of last year about, and we've talked about it on on the show a couple of times, but uh, some of the subtle swing adjustments he made to to elevate more, and then also just a guy that's 23 that's filling out a bit more, hitting the ball harder. So he's hitting Third the ball year. harder. He's elevating more, and he just looks more comfortable. He, I, I think he's going to do it. Um, and that's disgusting. disgusting. Twenty five fifty is gross. I, I I would like to see him steal a bit more frequently, and maybe because he's been banged up, he hasn't been doing it as much. He stole three but, bases in a game, and then hasn't and, stolen since. But the thing is, our Twitter account, run by our incredible Twitter team, keeps tagging me and stuff because he keeps hitting a home run. How is he going to steal when he's rounding the bases? That is true. He and is, then he's hitting triples. Mm -hmm. And then he's getting thrown out at third, trying to stretch a double and do a triple. It's like, dude, sit on first. I need <laughs> singles. I need you to steal. They're also like losing by, I, I yeah. imagine some of these games are like down four. It's like, why am I going to steal second? <laughs> uh, like point. Corbin already gave up six earned runs. Like Abrams gets on base. It's like, all right, like I'm not going anywhere. I'm more worried about that. I think he's more likely to hit 25 bombs and steal 50 bags. Uh, but I, I'm going to buy it aggressively just because, I'm buying the power, and I do think he's going to really kick the stolen bases into gear as the season progresses. And he's getting on base at such a high clip; like it's it's going to even out. He was, as you mentioned, um, you know, you, you brought this up, and one of the reasons why you took him, you know, as a long shot to lead the league in stolen bases, I thought it was a great pick, was that he was the best base dealer in baseball in the second half. So, you know, I, I think it might be a little bit of just pacing himself for the season too, um, and you know, trying to no, stay healthy. I, I'm telling you, dude, it's literally because he's barely been on first. Like, yeah, that's and, and when he has been on first occasionally, he's stolen three bases. And then when he's on first, there's sometimes a guy in second, or he's on, he just hasn't been on first that much. Because it's so Especially early. Especially relative to what we're used to seeing, how much we're used to seeing him be on first. So I've no, been I'm watching, with you. I, I've been watching, I, I'm taking absurd, it. I've been watching an absurd amount of Nationals games. I feel like I'm betting on them all the time, or I'm trying to watch CJ Abrams. Like, I feel like they've played, I think, 11 games. I think I've watched eight of them. I don't know why. I'm always watching yeah. Nationals games for whatever reason. All right, let's move on to your Miami Marlins. This is a take that I think you're going to buy instantly, but I really wanted to talk about him because there are not that many bright spots on the Marlins, but I view him as a bright spot so far. Max Meyer finishes as the second most valuable starter for the Miami Marlins. Buy or sell. He's got a 2-4-5 ERA in 11 innings. Strikeouts have been way down, only 7 Ks. But I really wanted to talk about him because Marlins fans need something to look up to. And you already have Lazardo, who did have a tough outing against the Yankees. But mm -hmm. to be fair to Lazardo, he's facing the greatest team of all time. I mean, what can you do? <laughs> right? He ran into the Bronx Bombers. Everyone runs into them, and it's impossible. But... In this rotation, you got Puck, you got Trevor Rogers, you got a couple other guys that I don't know how much you like. But I think you're a Max Meyer guy. Number two in the rotation, what do you think? Oh, man, that is so depressing. Um, no, it isn't. I mean, Max Meyer's a good pitching prospect. No, it's exciting, but it's like it, it's it's an indictment on like where <laughs> the, the team is at at this point. Because if you told me that like four months ago, you know, it's like, Oh man, that means Yuri's probably out of the equation. That means like that means a lot of other things. Uh, but I still have faith in Trevor Rogers, and I think he showed some good things overall. Yeah, but you I, don't even believe what you're saying right now. I, you know, Weathers is fine. I the thing is, is Max Meyer, I think, is solid. I I think the slider is in, insanely gross. I just worry about his fastball just getting hit hard, but yeah. he's such a competitor out there. Um, like he is, he's one of the, like he's psychopath pitcher type, which I love. love. Uh, 
I don't believe in Puck as a starter. I think they're going to move Rodgers if he's throwing well. So it's really a catch-22 <laughs> anyways. I Edward Cabrera, like, that guy frustrates the hell out of me. Braxton Garrett would be the the – still the best option because that guy's a walking quality start, but a shoulder impingement. We're waiting to see him come back. I still lean Braxton if he comes back in the next few weeks. Do you think he will? I think he will. I'm going to take the field. Okay. But I I think it's a good one. I'm just going to take the field because I am nervous about Meyer. Um, getting outs with that fastball that said he is just a guy that just knows how to pitch and just does not care if he has a tough outing he can turn the page real quick i'm gonna go with the field though just because i like the statistical probability of that but you look through two starts now man 11 innings three earned runs three walks against seven strikeouts like you said the k's haven't been there but he's been damn good been good I wanted to highlight a good Marlin. I think it's almost a hotter take to sell it, but I'm 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 going to sell it just because I like I like the uh, the chances of just either Braxton or Rogers or, or Weathers or whatever, uh, just one of them being able to stand out. But really, more Braxton. More than fair. Let's move on to the National League Central. We're going to start with your first place Pittsburgh Pirates. Buy or sell, Jared Jones gets down ballot Cy Young votes right now. He's got a three, eight, six ERA and 11 and two thirds, but the punchies, the whiffs strikeouts galore, 99 miles an hour has a, you know how you said uh, Jackson Churio kind of has a Ronald Acuna jr. Starter kit. Jared yeah. Jones kind of has a Spencer Strider starter kit in terms of the electric fastball with tons of ride with the breaking ball from hell. Now it's mostly a two pitch mix, but he's, I love the way he pitches, first of all. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's just going after guys with this fastball, and it's electric, and he's throwing it middle and saying, I dare you to hit my best pitch at such a young age, and they aren't hitting it. He's been incredible so far. Now, but from a run prevention standpoint, he can run into some home runs, Mm -hmm. like Spencer Schreider does, so the ERA may not be so dominant. But I'm curious. I'm not saying he wins the Cy Young. I'm not saying he wins top five down ballot Cy Young votes. I think they give them to around 15 pitchers. Do you think he gets in the National League this year? Okay, so let's contextualize it with like last year's Cy Young voting and like what the numbers were of a guy that like was like down, down ballot there. So like I'm going to the voting right now, 2023. Blake Snell obviously winning that. Like, so sir, it depends. Like, I mean, Chris Martin in the AL got a down ballot vote uh but like it's from also, a starter's perspective he had like a chris one bassett, ERA. chris bassett had four vote points so two percent of the vote share there with a three six and 200 innings the thing with jones is i actually think he could throw a fair amount of innings i'm sure they're not going to run him into the ground but he's relatively built up compared to a lot of young guys and i i, I think just the way he fills up the zone i think uh he's going to be a good f war guy and that's starting to be looked at more uh, and the strikeouts are always going to get, you know, some of the more analytically driven people to maybe throw them in there. I'm going to buy it. Cause like, I, I just think that fastball is too good and it, it is an aggressive buy, but at the same time, like why can't he, you know, have a low threes to mid threes with huge strikeout numbers. Like, why, why can't he have something along those lines in 170 innings? I think it comes down to how much, you know, leeway they give him, but I'll buy it. So I asked Jack the same question about Garrett Crochet, and he said he's selling it, and I'm selling it as well, but he was getting a lot of buzz in the gambling community of Cy Young votes because he's been so electric. But with Garrett Crochet, he's never had the innings. He's always been a reliever. The last time he... The last time I think he had 65 innings was at the University of Tennessee versus Jared Jones, who is a starter, has been a starter in the minor leagues and may not throw 200 innings. But if he gets to 150 and maybe strikes out 190 guys and puts up a 3-7, that fe- and then the Pirates are, maybe they win the division, maybe they're close. That feels like a guy who gets down, val- down ballot Cy Young votes. I- I'm with you. And, and so Jones threw 122 and two-thirds innings in 
2022 and then in 2023 through 126 and a third inning. So, yeah, I think they could easily push him up to, uh, you know, 140, 150, and maybe, you know, if they're competitive a little bit further than that. And I think if, if they're a team that surprises a lot of people and perform well, like the way that they have out of the gate, like there'll, there'll be a narrative aspect to it too. Uh, even at the three at six ERA sub one whip so far. And again, no free passes. Like he's going to, grayed out really well in a lot of, I think, the analytical components. And yeah, he might have some of those blow-up starts, but he's also going to have, like you said, like those dominant starts. I'm going to buy it. I think it's going to be down ballot, but um, I, I think he could put together a really special year. Let's move on to the Milwaukee Brewers. This, I think you're going to buy this one, but I think it's an interesting conversation. William Contreras leads catchers in F4 for the second straight Ooh. year. All catchers, not just All National catchers. League. All catchers. Now, he led last year, put up a 5.7 F4 to at least 5.4. And now this year, he's leading again, 0.6 F4. And man, is he destroying baseballs. Slashing 389, 439, 667 to give him a 191 WRC+, plus, meaning he is 91% better than the league average hitter at the catching position. He's got two home runs. Now, he is striking out, but he's also walking, and the defense is elite. And the reason I wanted to bring it up is... We got some fighters now. It used to be Will Smith and Adley. Can you beat them? Mm -hmm. Then you'll win. But now we have Logan O'Hoppy destroying baseballs. Yiner Diaz has been an incredible hitter. He's, he has a 0.5 F4. How about Salvi finding it? Now, I don't know if Salvi's <laughs> going to be there at the end of the year, but you know he's hitting well right now. JT Romuto is hitting 300 again, so maybe he's back offensively. And you got Adley, and you got Luis Campusano, you got Francisco Alvarez, you got Gabriel Moreno. There's a lot more catchers to keep your eye on. So do you think for the second straight season, William Contreras leads catchers in F4? Mm -hmm. These are good. These are good. I'm very proud of myself. Props to me. <laughs> I'm gonna I I'm gonna sell. Okay. Because I think Will Smith is just in such a good situation. He's so insulated in that lineup. Uh, the, the the catching just continues to get better. Um, so he's accumulating from that perspective. Uh, I think Will Smith is also going to get just – I think he's just one of those guys that can impact the game. And, and in a lot of the similar ways that, that Contreras does now too – I could see just a little bit more volatility with Contreras, like the swing and miss, you know, maybe creeping in a little bit more again. I think he's the favorite, no doubt. But this is one of those, like, I get the field. I still think Adley could just go insane. Um, I know it hasn't been the best start in the world for him. I, I'm not going to ever really be worried about that guy. I, and so I could see him just ending up going insane. And to your point about all the young, talented catchers, like, there's so many other guys that could, like, have a William Contreras arc. Like mm -hmm. Francisco Alvarez could have that kind of arc this year and go crazy. Uh, there, there's se several other guys that I kind of feel that way about. So, and, and even Adley, like it's it's been a fine start. It's just for whatever reason he's not grading out in the F4 department the same way as some of these other guys. Like he's hitting over 300 and he's defending well. Like I, I think he's going to go nuts uh, and start swinging for more power. Like he's only striking out eight percent of the time through his first 10 games walking 12 percent um, he's great yeah i think adley if i'm getting adley and will smith and you know everybody else i'm gonna probably take them like so i i, I think adley's gonna end up finishing on top because like it i feel like we're not even like noticing him because he's not slugging yet but he's gonna start slugging um so I, i'll take the field but man Contreras is just crazy he, clearly he's figured it out it's gonna get warm there in baltimore and then adley's gonna start going on <laughs> i can't wait to watch that all right, let's move on to the Chicago Cubs. Buy or sell, Shota Imanaga wins Rookie of the Year and finishes top five in Cy Young voting. As we're recording, he has 10 innings pitched, 12 strikeouts, and has yet to allow a run and looks incredible right now. The fastball has a million inches of vert. The slider is just a breaker. And uh, it's like a... I don't even know how to describe it. It's just if if he's throwing it, he he's going to hit you with your back ankle and your back foot. He's going to back foot some sliders. It's incredible to watch him. Top five in Cy Young voting. Now, there is precedent here. Kodai Senga finished second and also finished top five in Cy Young voting. So it's not crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't have the ghost fork, but he has a better fastball. What do you think? 
I think I think Yamamoto's gonna gonna do it. Mm. Um I just think Yamamoto's too good. I think the other side with Imanaga that makes me a little concerned over the course of the season is when that when that wind's blowing out in Wrigley, mm. how do things look? There was some, you know, in that lights out start, he was fantastic, but there was a lot of 340 foot fly balls with the wind blowing in. I'm with you. I think he's disgusting. You know, I love Imanaga, and I think he ends up finishing in the top three, potentially even, you know, runner up depends on how Merrill continues because guy's amazing. But I definitely we're think gonna, he finishes. We're going to talk three. about we're going to talk about Merrill at, at the oh, Padres Park. Can't wait. I'm going to sell just because I think Yamamoto is about to go God mode. Like mm-hmm. I think from this point forward, Yamamoto is going to look like a three hundred million dollar pitcher and just separate himself from from pretty much every rookie and most pitchers. I think I agree with you. But I do think that Ibanaga is the favorite right now among all rookies based on what we've seen so far. Because Yamamoto, he has gotten into a little bit of jams. Now, he's been able to work out of it, and that's credit to him and also credit to some of the umpires. Let's be honest with ourselves, Dodger fans. We all watch the game. We all watch some of the umpires give him some calls that he didn't necessarily deserve. But guys like that sometimes get the calls when they're always around the zone, right? Zach Gallen gets every call. Why? Because he's always nibbling around the corners. It's elite command. And that's what I saw from Yamamoto. Like, it was missing by a ball, but he was sticking to that same spot. And we have to understand that the umpires are going to start to give you a call when you're that consistent. So that's why Yamamoto was getting a lot of those calls. But, to his, you know, he was getting a lot of calls. I think Imanaga has looked more impressive so far, but I agree with you. I think Yamamoto will rise above and end up winning it, but... Man, he's impressive. He's so fun yeah. to watch. I hope both are unreal. Uh, and I think both will be. Uh, I am nervous that the long ball bites Imanaga a little bit and uh, as we go on. That's fair. One of the great Peter Vision calls, maybe of all time. <laughs> Cincinnati Reds. Spencer Steer leads the team in F4. Buy or sell. So right now he's slashing 378, 465, 757. And yes, I'm taking my victory lap right now. 216 WRC plus. That's 116% better than a league average hitter. He's put up a 0.9 F4, which is tied for the third best in Major League Baseball. Buy or sell. And can I give you some context before you answer? Yes. Ellie De La Cruz, who's probably an answer that you might be thinking of is on pace for 32 home runs and 97 steals. But he's on pace for a 4.9 F4 because he has not been good defensively. And it looks like Spencer Steer has found a home in left field. Now, they're probably going to move him around, but I think he looks great in left. And if he gets a little extra points there for some defense and keeps hitting the way he is... Now, there's a lot of great players on the Reds, right? We can talk about Will Benson. Maybe McLean comes back and goes on a tear. We don't know. But look at the Reds roster right now and tell me that you're selling that Spencer Steer doesn't lead this team in F4 this year. I'm interested to hear your I, answer. I saw, I mean, Steer Steer is solid and safe. And, you know, I, I, I think the problem from an F4 perspective last year, and I think part of the reason why his season was underrated, was that he wore a lot of hats for them. Like he played all over and then, you know, played mediocre defense in a lot of different places, which is extremely valuable. And he was just taking one for the team, but that kind of docked him from an F4 perspective. He he got a lot. He was very, very severely impacted, you know, when it came to the defense because of how much they threw him around and he didn't really get to get comfortable anywhere. But from an offensive perspective, he was great. I'm, I'm going to buy that just because, well, I still think Ellie could, could really go crazy. He could. I mean, you're basically comparing right now, but his defense is so bad. I mean, it has been bad. Yeah. I mean, I always say, even the prospect write-up, if you go back and watch, like I was like, hey, Ellie could be passable as he develops at shortstop, but could be a phenomenal third baseman. Uh, and and that's where they should move him. And, you know, they ultimately, you know, I, I wonder if McLean was healthy, how what the dynamic would look like and everything. But, of course, now they just got to roll with him there. Yeah, it's been rough. It's been rough defensively at, at, at shortstop. And that is going to hurt the, the F4. But at the same time, when you play shortstop, like even at a subpar level, like you'll still get some war value accumulation. But the volatility of the offensive side of things, too, I think makes it hard. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I think Steer's too consistent. Now he's in a position where even if he's not a good defender in left, if he's not bad, 
He's going to accumulate offensively. He's valuable on the base paths. Uh, you know, n- nothing crazy, but he is valuable there. I, I, I'll buy it. I think he sneaks in the four and a half win season, and I don't know what other position player would do that. I agree with you. I'm buying it as well. Let's move on to the St. Louis Cardinals. This is a fun one. Buy or sell Cardinals trade Wilson Contreras and put Ivan Herrera as their full time catcher. Buy. I I love. I knew you'd buy it immediately. (laughs) I mean, uh, yeah, that one that one was designed for me. It literally. I don't know why this guy wasn't on any top 100 list. I don't know why the Cardinals have been so reluctant to hand the keys to this guy, and why they were so you know keen on just signing a Wilson Contreras. And I understand when they signed Contreras, Herrera wasn't didn't really make the swing adjustments yet, and so I, I get that. But like when you relegated Contreras, why not give Herrera more of an extended look? The guy cut the, the you know, pretty much every every issue he had down. He cut the chase down. Now he's extremely patient. He hits the ball really hard, but now he's elevating it way more. His defense has come a long way. The guy's not even 24 yet. Um, I think they, they're going to you know kind of be an inconsistent team this year, see the future, and want to give run to their 24. You know, he's going to be 24 by that time, 24-year-old catcher. And, you know, I think, either relegate Contreras to the DH spot and and maybe that makes more sense or move him. I'm, I'm buying it. Herrera, I think, is a better option for them moving forward. I'm a big fan of the way he operates in that bat. Hungry in the box. It looks like he's licking his chops, staring, isn't afraid of no man. And the open stance and the way he steps in, it just looks like he wants to unload on every baseball. A very entertaining at bat to watch. And it often ends up being a loud at bat, whether it be a home run, could be a loud out, maybe a double. Dude hits ropes. And the last six games, he's hit sixth, fourth, 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 fifth, and sixth. So like deservedly I mean, so. They're, they're putting him put him in the middle of the order. Like they're gonna, I think they're starting to respect him a little bit more. As they should. He's kind of like the Cardinals Luis Campisano. Yeah, where just he just kept get, like getting like these sporadic annoying like limited opportunities and like i've always loved camposano too and i with herrera i think he's even safer uh mm. with the way he can draw walks and and the mechanical adjustments he's made that you know i've bought into when i put that thread out at the end of last year um yeah i, I hope they do that and i'm buying it we'll start with the national league west with the los angeles dodgers this is a good one i think this is a fun one because i mean what are we gonna buy with them I mean, are we buying that Tyler Glass is really good? You know, I, I don't know. So I wanted to make a fun one. Mookie Betts leads the Dodgers in home runs. Mm. He has five so far. Teoscar has four. Otani has three. Otani also hit just a beautiful opposite field home run against the Twins the other day. Just beautiful. I mean, he's amazing. You know, he's leading the league at hits, Otani. I was going to say, he's a, he's a contact hitter now, so, you know, to get him out of the finish. He's amazing. And people are like, well, why'd you rank him one? He's not going to pitch. I'm thinking to myself, I think he's the best hitter in the league. Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> led the league in WRC Plus last year, right? That was I mean, the league in hits, and, hitting, and he has one elbow. And he's fast. Did you know that? No. <laughs> you should you should turn on a Dodger game once in a while. He's fast. I should just look at <laughs> Savant pages more. Yeah. So are you buying that? Mookie Betts leading the Dodgers in... In home runs, because you also have to go through the Dodgers lineup. Of course, Otani is the answer. So if you're saying I'm selling it because of Otani, that's fine. Kind of a cop out answer, but it is an answer that you could give. Will Smith is a home run hitter, but he's not like a 40 home run guy. Maybe he will be, honestly. I mean, he's hitting 400 right now. Freddie Freeman is a 30 home run guy. Teoscar Hernandez, is he going to get enough run against righties and lefties all season long to hit for 40 home runs? I mean, Mookie hit. What are you at 39 last year? 39 and 35 the year before that. Does Mookie Betts lead the Dodgers in home runs this year? As much as I want to say yes, like Otani at 44 and 135 games. I I know it's a lame answer. And I think it's fun because it's possible. It's fair. It's fair to say. And he's on a crazy pace right now. But like, dude, I can't. I can't. And also, like, I do think that if you said everybody but Otani or everybody but Otani, I'm buying it. It really is just Otani. So like, if you ask me everybody but Otani, um, I think he hits more home runs than Freeman. I think he hits more home runs than Will Smith. I think he hits more home runs than Max Muncy. So I I think that that side of it, like, makes it interesting. But yeah, I got to take Otani. I think I am buying it. 
And the reason I'm buying it is because we did see our decrease from Bryce Harper with a similar thing, right? You get Tommy John, it's his, right? He, he's not pitching for a reason. He has one elbow. So maybe this is the year that I think Mookie Betts, because I think Mookie Betts is going to hit 40. He's just, he's a different player. I got him on my, well, I I got mean, him on my wall Harper behind was, me. Harper was more like contact oriented to your point and, yeah. you know, not swinging as violently. Um, it's I, If he's going to do it, it's going to be this year. I don't think it's crazy. I just, yeah, I'm just going to be lame and take the, the, the cyborg. Because even if you don't get Otani, I mean, Will Smith could legitimately hit 40. Yes. I, again, I would take Mookie over everybody else, but yeah, that, that does make it even easier when your fallbacks, like again, other, just some of the best hitters in the entire sport. So we've been pretty positive so far, but as we move to the Arizona Diamondbacks, we're going to get a bit negative because this is a team that I was extremely excited for coming off a of world series. Everybody thought, well, they didn't deserve to be here. World series hangover. They're going to fall back to earth. And I said, no, this team is much better than what everybody thinks. And they have proved me wrong so far. You cannot lose to the Rockies. You cannot blow as many leads as they have been blowing. Now, Paul Seawald is on the IL. But this is still one of those bullpens that basically brought them to the World Series, and now they're all falling apart. The starting pitching has not looked as great either. Buy or sell, the Diamondbacks missed the playoffs. Mm. Uh, I mean, I am worried about the pitching. Um, you know, it is it is great to to add some of the guys that they added though, and you know, you're gonna get Jordan Montgomery get some, back. Yeah, you're gonna get Montgomery. You hope you get you know Erod back at some point. But it's gonna be a gauntlet in the National League. Hell, you 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 are not gonna win the division, so you got to find a, a wild card spot. And now, the teams that you're competing for a wild card spot with are. You know, even if you ignore the central and say none of those teams are going to keep it up, when I think you could say several of those teams could. You also got the Phillies, uh, who I think are you know obviously going to be uh, ahead of them in terms of if you look at one sixty two. Agreed. I you know I think they're gonna they could easily be better than some of the other teams in the West besides the Dodgers. But you know, are the Pirates going to keep it up? Probably not. Brewers probably not. I think the Reds and the Cubs are good. Uh. I just like do, do you are you worried about like when they get Jmont back and they get Erod back? Is that rotation not just too good to miss the playoffs? Yeah, I agree. I'm selling this take. I'm I think they're going to still make the playoffs. I think they're going to bounce back. They have too much pitching in this weird bullpen blowing it every single game. I I just And they're they're so it. deep into it like go make a yeah. trade. I like the Marlins suck. Go get Tanner Scott. They've like, also played the Yankees. They played the Braves, and they played one game at Coors where they blew a lead. Like there's, there have been games where they've been up and they're just blowing it. And this is an overreaction take that I wanted to hear your thoughts on. So, but I am selling it. I, I still think they make the playoffs. I would have been. I think, and it sounds super silly, but I think one of the things I'm teetering on it. One of the things that honestly made me a bit more willing to say, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm going to sell it. Is you know it, losing Waller was one thing, but it wasn't that big of a deal because Perdomo got the job anyways. You know, won the job out of out of you know spring training, and you know you 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 want Waller healthy, but in terms of the team's outlook for the season, you know, it doesn't impact them too too much. But now losing Perdomo when now you don't have Waller to to fill in really hurts. Blaze Alexander coming out of I wouldn't say nowhere because they did add him to the forty man before, but just just turning into what he's been for them. And like I don't know if he's going to keep this up, but just having another option at shortstop where it's not like the Giants putting Nick Ahmed out there. Like you have somebody that can actually go there, swing it, and and hold hold his own at the bottom of the order makes me feel a lot better, especially at the shortstop position. I'm going to sell it. I, I I think the offense is too good, and I think the pitching reinforcements are coming. They've been too aggressive to not add to the bullpen. I think they'll find a way to do that. And as you mentioned, they'll get Seawald back. Uh, I'll sell that. They run Kevin Newman out there against lefties, and he like always kind of gets a base hit. <laughs> Just thought everybody should Forgot have. that they have Kevin Newman. Yeah, he gets a base hit every now and then. Um, oh, this is a good one. San Francisco Giants. Jordan Hicks leads the pitching staff in ERA by herself. He's got a 0.75 right now, and he looks great. We talked about it. I texted you, and I said, hey, this is a guy we got to focus on because I I was more relating it to the betting market. I just think the betting market has been down on him since he debuted, and what I'm seeing is great stuff. 
looks like a starter to me. But you went into the season down on him. Mm -hmm. So really, I kind of want the Jordan Hicks report from the hater. And not a (laughs) hater. Just someone who was more down than most. And again, it's been through two starts. Let's see him do it over 160 innings. I think that was more of your play. But has he impressed you? Has he done things that you didn't expect that he was going to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, how does... (laughs) I, I saw a starting pitcher or a reliever who struggled to stay on the field and battled command issues that you're now making a starter. And I'm just like, okay, that doesn't sound like a very good recipe. And what does Fair. he do? Fair. He he holds his velocity deep into outings and he's pounding the zone. This guy went from a four three nine walk per nine to 0.75. I know it's a small sample. I understand that. But even in spring training, wasn't walking anybody. And I don't know. I would venture to say that you might not have, not have found a 12-inning stretch last year where he only walked one batter. <laughs> I, I know you definitely didn't the year before that. So like, it's just a different guy. And in the arsenal, like it looks great. He's pitching to contact. He's getting a lot of ground balls. The slider is still a good out pitch. But you're telling me that I also get Mr. Consistency and Logan Webb on yep. the other side. Who I know is off to a slow start, but like, come on, I know you're not going to bet against that guy. No shot. And then I get the guy who won the Cy Young last year. Yes, he and, does. and and you know, in a pitcher's park. And I know he wasn't good out in his first outing, but yeah, I mean, it's fine. He only threw three innings. I just think Hicks has been so good, so good. I'm gonna, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I can't flip flop that after eleven innings um, or twelve innings. I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it because I'm getting legitimately one of these more consistent arms in the sport, and I'm getting last year's Cy Young winner on the other side. So I'll sell it, but I bet a lot of people are buying that one after what we've seen so far. I would sell it as well, just because the field is solid. I mean, you got Logan yeah. Webb and you got Blake Snell there, so I would sell it based on that. The reason, and I talked to Jack about some of the takes that I'm bringing up are more highlighting some players that I've been very mm-hmm. impressed with stamping a take that is a little bit outlandish, but with how well they've been doing, it doesn't sound that crazy. If, I agree with you. I would sell, but at the same time, this guy has been awesome. Awesome. And to put it in perspective, like if you asked me that two starts ago, I would have laughed and just said next question. So it just shows you like how insane those two starts have been and you know how much he is worth you know, how much he's earned reconsideration from anyone who doubted what he could do as a starter. And, you know, I hope he keeps doing it. I mean, it's, it's been really fun to see. And yeah, it's such a talented arm that's had, you know, a frustrating career at points because of the health issues. And I think those contributed to the command issues. Like what, what a story it would be if he settles into a starter and you know, becomes a great one. I know Cardinals fans were probably punching air right now. Cause of course that doesn't happen in St. Louis. Uh, why would it? I saw some tweets where it's like, the greatest market inefficiency in baseball right now is the Cardinals giving up on outfielders. And I thought that was so funny. I mean, you got Adolis Garcia, you got Randy and Rosarena. There's more names I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but I know those two directly come. Oh, Tyler O'Neill, duh, because he's hitting oh, yeah. 700 for the Red Sox. Yep. All right, let's move on to our last team. To be perfectly honest with you, I couldn't really think of something, but I did get the haters got to me. During our um, our NL projected win totals, we were all bagging on the Rockies, and I even said, and they're not even good at defense either. I was mostly bagging on them, so I want to return the favor. Rockies fans who roasted me te- saying how much better the defense is going to be, you were right, I was wrong. So how about this? Buy or sell, the Colorado Rockies finish as a top five defensive team. In defensive run save, they currently sit in sixth right now. This is a much improved defensive unit. You put Brenton Doyle in center. I know Ryan McMahon made that error last night, but I still think he's a good third baseman. Tovar looks so good over there at shortstop. Nolan Jones is obviously great in left. Brendan Rodgers, you move him over from the shortstop position. I still think he's a good second baseman. Top five in defensive run save for the Colorado Rockies. This could be an easy sell. But they are playing great defense. So you said they're top five right now? They're sixth right now. Interesting. I you know what? I'm gonna buy it because I honestly think Tovar had like this this opening series from hell 
where he just kept catching like weird hops. They had him shifted over into center field and he just kept catching like weird hops off the back of the mound and just they were eating him up. And I think he had like negative four OAA in I the first to, series. I need to correct myself. I when I compiled all of this, this was for Jack the day before the Ryan McMahon error. The the defense was terrible in that game. This is how early they dropped from sixth in baseball to sixteenth. Holy, that, that shows game. you how, how early we are. How right? early it is. That just goes to show how early it is. So I want to, they are not sixth right now. They were sixth when I brought it to Jack on Monday. We're now recording on Tuesday. They're 16. Now, after today's game, they might be back up to six. I don't know. But just looking at the team beyond the stats right now, I do see a great defensive unit. Um, yeah, I'm still, I still think they can finish top five. I like Nolan Jones has not been playing. He's been playing horrible defense for them. Horrible at defense, points. Weirdly. And Tovar is again, going to be better than, than he's been in and has been picking it really well over the last few games. Like you said, uh, Doyle is just going to be like an alien, you know, when it comes to you know, accumulating those OAA DRS, all those analytics um, I, I, players do get outfielders specifically do get docked and, and, and course, but I think they've done a better job of kind of rectifying that. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to buy it. I, I think that this team does have some, some really talented defenders, uh, and and I think Doyle can just kind of keep them afloat too. Uh, I'll, I'll buy it. I think that's the one thing that uh, you know the Rockies will have going for them this year. Hell yeah, we're buying it to be nice. I'm selling it. No shot they finished top five. <laughs> you don't like it? I mean, top no way. Five? I just think like we'll Tovar. See. Tovar had like that that series from hell. He's negative two OAA because of that. I think he's going to be great the rest of the way. I I think McMahon's one of the better defensive third basemen. He's I'm, been, I'm really just a hater. Hard. I'm just a hater. That's you know that's just me being a dickhead. Like I, I, I am selling it. I, don't I mean I would sell anything five. Rockies related. I get yeah, it. We'll buy it. Fuck it. I'm buying it. What well, word? We'll buy it. All right. So that'll do it for buy and sell. Overall thoughts on buy or sell? Some good takes. I'm in. I'm in. I thought you, I thought they were good. I mean you had me like talking to myself for a while here trying to like sort it all out. So I thought those were some good ones then. Do you like, think nothing 10- that I was just like. Hey, that's stupid. Like, no way. Ten buys, five sells. You think that was accurate? Pretty close, yeah. Pretty damn close. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed. We will, of course, be back again on Thursday. Remember to go get your Just Baseball merch. I'm rocking the hat right here. Go get yours in the episode description. And if you would be so kind to rate and review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, five stars. And if you are watching this on YouTube, hit that big red subscribe button for baseball videos all season long and we're all brought to you always by bet mgm remember to go use our code just baseball in the episode description in order to get that first bet offer up to fifteen hundred dollars paid back in bonus bets for arm Layton, i am peter apple and with that thank you everybody